If you're looking to buy a stacked NBA 2K account with max badges and more, visit SportsTMB.com. He has been in the community for years and has hundreds of reviews. Click the first link in the description to get your account today. Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it on the channel already with many more like it to come in the future. So subscribe. I am trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I would really appreciate it. Also drop a like on the video so it does better on YouTube's algorithm. And real quick, if you did not check out my latest video on the James Harden trade, please go do that. I don't think it hit sub boxes like it was supposed to. And also I uploaded during the NFL draft so that didn't help. But if you want to hear another perspective, on the James Harden trade, go give that one a watch. Today, I wanted to talk about what is wrong with Dennis Smith Jr., continuing my what's wrong with this player subsection of the 2K talks. Uh, I just find it interesting to talk about players who thus far have been pretty disappointing, see why they have been disappointing, and then talk about what changes they could make to be a decent enough NBA player or even be a really good one. So for a quick career summary for Dennis Smith, in his rookie year, he was solid enough. He averaged 15 a game on 47% true shooting percentage, which is not efficient at all. He got five assists a game, looked like he had some defensive potential. And overall, the first year, it was like, yeah, he wasn't that efficient, but there's a reason enough here to believe that he can still be a pretty good player and even possibly a star player. Like, yeah, not greatest efficiency, but rookie year guards are not always amazing, so... There was no reason to give up hope yet. And then second year came around and he clearly did not fit with Luka. He couldn't shoot the three ball and he wasn't effective without the ball. So in order for him to be semi-effective and he wasn't even that effective, you had to give him the ball and have Luka play off ball, which you'd rather have Luka with the ball and a guard who can shoot than the other way around. So he was eventually traded to the New York Knicks, where it was a lot of the same from his rookie year. He once again averaged 15 a game on 47% true shooting percentage, got five assists. And then this year with New York, he has potentially been the worst player in the NBA. 5.5 points on 40% true shooting percentage, which is absolutely atrocious. Now, as for why his numbers have been so bad, I guess we should break down his game, uh, specifically what he's bad at, because he's bad at things more than he is good at them. His shooting is really bad, and that's been the main reason his efficiency has been so horrible. He hasn't been bad getting to the free throw line, but he has been bad at actually hitting the free throws. He is around a 65% free throw shooter. In his first year in New York, that percentage has gone down even further. In his first 21 games in New York in the 2018-19 season, he averaged three and a half free throw attempts a game in 28 minutes, which wasn't horrible, but 57% from the line, no bueno. His defense, uh, not good either, although he had shown flashes of being decent on that end, but overall, it was more about the physicals that he brought, his athleticism, his size, but he just wasn't all locked in on that end. He didn't really have the defensive IQ there. And then playmaking wise, he's not bad, but he's also not good. Like five assists a game in starters minutes for a point guard, it's serviceable. It's definitely not the only playmaking you want on your team for damn sure, but it's also not horrible. But like with all the other things he's bad at, him being just okay at playmaking is far from ideal. And also a lot of his issues and a lot of the issues that have stemmed with the players that I've talked about for this, again, subsection, is that he doesn't seem to have much confidence. He goes on the court and he doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing, or even if he does seem like he knows what he's doing, it doesn't seem like he believes in himself all that much. Also, I think even though his jump shooting is a problem, he also, a big problem here is that he takes too many of them. I mean, Russell Westbrook this year is averaging high 20s, shooting like below 30% from three. It's possible to score without the three ball, but he also takes so many of them, and I think that's because he lacks the confidence to attack the basket. He shoots 59% at the rim, which is pretty good for a guard. It's not amazing like as it was hyped up to be coming into the NBA, but it's also not bad, but he takes so many pull-up mid-range and pull-up threes. He just goes for jump shots way too much. He shoots in the high 20s 
from mid-range with around 18% of his shots coming from there. Like, I'm talking like he's shooting like 27%, which is god-awful, clearly. Obviously, he also shoots poorly from three. For his career, he is a 31% three-point shooter. The four attempts per game and the five that he took in his rookie year does suggest that he's at least willing to take them. But I also think if he cut down those attempts, he could be more efficient with them. So, what adjustments can he make with what he does have to be a solid enough NBA player long term? Now, the guy is 22 years old, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that he just completely turns this around and he's a good enough shooter and he actually becomes a star player in the NBA. But thus far, every sign has pointed to him not even being an NBA player in five years. So we're going to look at this from the perspective of how does he at least make an NBA roster past his rookie contract? So... One of the things I think he should put a focus on is playmaking. I think especially with his driving ability, he could be more than just an average playmaker. He's His five assists a game, like I said, is fine, but I think with him making more of a focus there, being more pass first than shoot first, he could definitely be a pretty solid backup point guard as a playmaker. Now, I also think he should drive to the basket more. I think that will open more opportunities for him to get playmaking, like the classic drive and kick. And then also get to the line more and shoot better from the line, like 78%. That's not a high bar, especially for a point guard. But if you can get to the line, like if you can get like four free throws a game off of the bench, that's pretty damn good. And then also, he just needs to not take mid-range shots. Like, he should not be taking... If he's that bad at them, I don't see a world where you go from 20s from mid-range to mid-40s to the 50s. Like, that's, that's probably not going to happen with him. Now, as for his three-point shot, only around 60% of his three-pointers are assisted, which suggests that he's taking a lot of them off of the dribble. And uh, that's not really what he should be doing with the level of shooting talent that he has. I should have mentioned also he is a pretty good ball handler. Uh, I forgot to put that in the things that he was good at, but yeah, that's there. But he really should not be taking any pull-up shot of any kind. I think if he just stayed as a stationary three-point shooter who could play off ball and shoot, let's say, 37% from three on 2.5 attempts per game, just keep it to catch and shoots I think that's a pretty solid enough three-point shooter like he can definitely be a backup and you don't have to worry about him missing his threes too often now the guy is still young like I said there's a chance that this goes further but as of right now those are the adjustments I think he needs to make also, again, as I said with Kevin Knox in his video, apparently there's a lot of players on the Knicks who have issues. Uh, I think getting out of New York could be helpful. I don't think a player who struggles with confidence should be playing in the biggest city in the world. That's a bit of pressure to say the least. As for some player comparisons for what I think he could be if he made these adjustments, I think he could be like Ish Smith or even higher end like Alfred Payton with a decent jump shot, which would be a massive disappointment for what he was expected to be coming into the league. And it would also make him a flat out bust because the Mavericks did not draft him at, I believe, what was it, number nine or number eight to be Ish Smith. But that's still an NBA player. That's still a solid enough career. You might not be remembered when your career is over, but you will have a solid NBA career. You will make a lot of money and you will play a long time if you're a guy like Ish Smith. If he can play make, play above average defense, drive to the basket pretty well, get to the line decently, shoot around 78%, hit open threes, and overall not be a negative on both ends, he could be a 25-minute backup point guard type of guy, which again, that is pretty all right. 10 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds, shoot 47% from the field, 37% from 3 on 2-3 to three attempts. That is a pretty good player, a player that's nice to have on your team. He can definitely be valuable under those circumstances and net some pretty decent contracts as well. 
Ish Smith this year is making four million. I believe he made four million the year before that, and he has another year on his deal. He is a got a pretty decent contract. That's not a lot in comparison to what he would have made as a star. But as long as you save your money right, you can retire with your career and not have to do anything else with just making that kind of money for a few years. Alfred Payton, he's made even more, making around nine million. However, I don't think. Uh, Dennis Smith is going to get to the level of defender or playmaker that Alfred Payton is, but he will have the jump shot, so that might balance it out a bit. But solid point guard, solid backup point guard money is still good money, and it's better than the alternative of having to play the rest of your career overseas. So that's what's wrong with Dennis Smith Jr. and some of the adjustments he can make. I think he can be an Ish Smith type of player, which not great but still serviceable that's the end of this video please be sure to like and subscribe for more nba content like this and cue the outro music